things are moving more quickly than expected as week three of testimony wraps up in Donald Trump's criminal trial. Chief legal correspondent Katie Barlow is here to recap the week and look ahead to next. Well, it looks like the prosecution is nearing the end of their case, actually telling the judge today that they may rest their case in chief by the end of next week. The jury heard from several witnesses this week, including Stormy Daniels, who testified about the 2006 sexual encounter she had with former President Donald Trump. And although there were plenty of explicit details in Daniels' testimony, this case is about hush money payments and business records. So prosecutors are going to have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Trump knew about the payments and intended to make them to influence the 2016 election. All right, there's a name that's popping up now because there's been a lot of different names that we've not maybe heard as part of a regular conversation. Madeline Westerhout. Madeline Westerhout took the stand this week as well. She didn't make as many headlines as Stormy Daniels, but might be just as important to the prosecution's case. She's the former personal assistant to the president, and she used to be the one that controlled what happened in and around the Oval Office. And she actually testified about, we talked earlier about how the president would actually sign off on checks from his individual accounts, because people in New York would mail the checks to D.C., they would get to the White House. Madeline was the one in charge of making sure that they went to him, that he signed them before they were shipped back to New York, including the checks to Michael Cohen. Speaking of Michael Cohen, because we know about the gag order, the former president has that gag order, it's against him. People like Michael Cohen are not short of words. He is on cable news, he's doing podcasts out there. He has a lot to say. I, I know Trump would like to respond to a lot of that, but, but could there be a gag order against some of these witnesses even after they took the stand. Well, Trump's defense team tried to make that happen today. And to your point, Jim, he does have a lot to say. And he has taken to social media to kind of try and goad the former president, so it seems. And today, Trump's defense team asked that the judge gag him as well, subject him to a gag order. And the judge said no. But he did tell the prosecution to make sure that they tell him once again that he should keep his mouth shut, really. But he decided not to go so far as to issue a gag order for any of the witnesses in this case, including Michael Cohen. Now we'll see what Cohen does over the weekend after the judge has explicitly said to the prosecutors, can you please tell him one more time just not to say anything? All right, so uh, here we are. Things are moving along very quickly. Going into next week, what are we looking at? Next week, we can expect Michael Cohen to take the stand on Monday, and his testimony could take several days. He's the star witness for the prosecution. He's the one who made the payments to Stormy Daniels and to Karen McDougal. And he's the one who will be answering questions about how that process played out and whether he did it at the direction of the president. The question is whether jurors are going to believe him when he testifies about that because he has maybe some honesty problems. He is an admitted liar. Yeah. He has admitted he's lied under oath. And a reminder here that he actually pleaded guilty to federal charges related to these hush money payments, spent some time in jail, including for campaign finance violations. All right. Well, there you go, Katie Barlow here. And of course, you can watch her in the courts on Sunday at 1130, a little bit sooner on Fox Local. Good to see you. Thanks.